poem by D.H. Lawrence entitled Self-Pity. I never saw a wild thing feel sorry for itself. A bird would fall dead frozen from a bow without ever having felt sorry for itself. On behalf of the members of the Corporation of St. George and the community of St. George, I would like to welcome you to our annual World Poetry Day event. In 2016, under the direction of a former mayor, the Corporation of St. George began to celebrate some of the UNESCO designated days. Two specific ones were chosen, World Poetry Day and Teacher's Day, so that we could honor our youth, our future, and the people who will inspire and cultivate our youth, their teachers. World Poetry Day was first adopted during the 30th UNESCO General Conference in Paris in 1999. The aim is to support linguistic diversity through poetic expression and increasing the opportunity for endangered languages to be heard. World Poetry Day is the occasion to honor poets, revive oral traditions of poetry, recitals, promote the reading writing and teaching of poetry to foster the convergence between poetry and other arts such as theater, dance, music, and painting, and raise the visibility of poetry in the media. As poetry continues to bring people together across continents, all are invited to join in. Before we proceed with the event, I would like to read the following proclamation to start the event. Proclamation, World Heritage Day. March 21st, 2021. Whereas, we recognize the cultural importance of language and literacy as the primary means of conveying knowledge and whereas, we agree that literature is defined as words raised to an art form and whereas, we acknowledge that poetry is amongst the oldest forms of literature and it aims to express humankind's greatest hopes, fears, loves and dream and whereas we understand that literacy is nurtured by sharing and promotion of all forms of literature and whereas United Nations Education Scientific and Cultural Organization also known as UNESCO has declared observing a World Poetry Day March 21st every year and whereas We encourage our citizens to enrich themselves through partaking in all forms of culture. We support the idea of promoting literature and especially poetry in our community. Now therefore, I, George Dowling III, JP, Mayor of the Town of St. George, do hereby proclaim March 21st as World Poetry Day in the Town of St. George. Today, we will be entertained by students from East End Primary St. George's Preparatory, Francis Patton, and St. David's. In addition, we will be treated to performance by members of the Chew Stick Foundation and a musical performance by the String Collective. To all those who are watching from around the world, please enjoy this presentation by our local school groups and some of our other talented Bermudians. Thank you. We will now have a poetry selection by East End Primary. The Beach Baby. Fishy lips and salty kisses. A bucket that drips full of seaside wishes. Sandy toes and a sunscreened nose. Two little hands digging in the sand. The sun, the sky, and the birds flying by. Summer seas and the ocean's breeze. Oh, how I will forever adore. The days we share beside the shore. I like fishing by Zeta Fabric Dunt. I like fishing, it is fun. I catch a lot of fish. I go fishing with my family. We go fishing down the channel. Boats are cool by Jess Anderson. I like fish 
I go fishing with my dad. We go on his boat. We catch big fish and small fish. Sometimes gray fish, sometimes orange fish. I like fishing with my dad, and he he is cool, and his boat is too. Hello, I'm Miss Phipps, the P2 teacher at East End Primary, and I will be reading "Boats Are Fast" by Levante Smith Outerbridge. Boats are fast. Boats are fun. I like boats. They are nice. When I grow up, I want to drive a ferry boat. I will be a pilot. We will now have a musical selection performed by the String Collective. We will now have a poetry selection by Miss Deidre Bean of the Trusick Foundation. Call me a gem in the Atlantic with mystery stone deep. I will tell you much about myself, but some secrets I will keep. Beneath the surface, my tectonic bedrock swelled. With a surge, heat, and great fury, true beauty was beheld. Through shipwrecks, wars, and hurricanes, my people have endured, not indigenous, but ingenious, laboring close to home or far beyond my shores. On balls of innovation, they were conquerors of waves, with expertise and heads held high, whether freemen or skilled slaves. They crafted fine vessels that spirited to fame, shining light for ships to see to run aground on treacherous reefs, privateering round the world loaded with bad intention. With our ships, we did some things not polite to mention. Three corners hold a mystery that has yet to unravel. These devil's isles were heaven sent where deliverance and patience travel. From wailing hogs for sustenance and offered to allies for recompense, born on seismic uproar and northern outposts in the sea, rich with microbes, coral and sargassum history. Steal a glimpse, I promise, to give more than you can take. Asking where these pathways lead, 
The answer is River the Fates. You can search a warm breeze for my true story, but you'll wander your life long. Lean in close and listen. You might hear the Kahal song, the call of the Kiskadi, or even the click of the cicada. This paradise, subtropical, just north of the equator, has played its role across the globe, rife for colonists and crusaders. Gulf Stream is upwelling the marine as I sit atop a sleeping giant, crowned cerulean blue, pristine. Address me as Lagarza, honor my salt water name. While today I said a lot, I promise there's more from whence that came. We will now have a poetry selection by St. David's Primary. Do you know what the sea is able to do? By Pat Inglesby. Do you know what the sea is able to do? For all of her millions and billions and trillions of tons, her rocks and her wrecks, her seaweed and stones, her mermaids and serpents, mysterious bones, her tempest to test you, fish that can fly, pinkies that are gone in the wink of an eye, whirlpools to suck you as if you are sweet, sharks who would shred you like yesterday's wheat. Do you know what the sea is able to do? She is able to lie perfectly still without uttering a sound. Quiet as a feather, adrift on the ground. I find that almost impossible to do. What do you think? Me too. The ocean is important, especially to this world. Its shiny waters sparkling with all its pearls. If you come across the ocean and its features, you will most likely see some of its living creatures. The ocean is beautiful, you know, with all its living creatures and their sparkly glow. But not everything is all okay down under. Because if you look closer, you can see where the pollution plunders. Sea creatures are dying because of all this pollution. But thankfully, there are people who have come up with a solution. You can go on living and doing your normal cycle. But all that we ask of you to do is to go and recycle. Maybe you can do even more to try and help your peers. You can go to a polluted beach near and help by being a volunteer. The Ocean, Harshita Das, 11 years, Noida. As I look from the edge of the ocean, glimmering golden, where it's almost dawn, so many waves come towards me, and yet I know there is a lot more going on. The ocean stretches for miles around, so many creatures with fins and gills, so many miles below the ground, the waves are splashing closer and closer. As I realize, the world is bigger than it seems. And as I stare into the ocean, in golden light, it gleams. now have a musical selection performed by the String Collective.
We will now have a poetry selection by Francis Patton School. Sea Calm by Langston Hughes. How still, how strangely still the water is today. It is not good for water to be so still that way. There's a ship on the sea by an animal. There's a ship on the sea. It is sailing tonight, sailing tonight. And father's a boy and the moon is all bright, shining and bright. Dear moon, he'll be sailing for many a night, sailing for mother and me. Oh. Follow the ship with your silvery light as, as Father sails over the sea. Adrift! A little boat adrift by Emily Dickinson. Adrift! A little boat adrift. And night is coming down. Will no one guide a little boat? Unto the nearest town. So sailors say on yesterday, just as the dust was brown. One little boat gave up its strife and gargled down and down. But angels say on yesterday, just as the dawn was red, one little boat of earthbent retrimmed its mast, redecked its sails, and shot exultant on. Now the spring is in the town, now the wind is in the tree, and the winter keels go down to the calling of the sea. Out from mooring dock and slip, through the harbor buoys they glide, drawing seaward till they dip to the swirling of the tide. One by one, then two by two, down the channel's turns they go, hovering for the open blue where the thirsty gray airs blow. Craft of many builds and trims, does restitch of tilt on furls, till they hang upon the rim of the Azores ocean world. And returning, he was such a little, little boat that toddled down the bay. He was such a gallant, gallant sea that beckoned it away. He was such a greedy, greedy wave that licked it from the coast. Nor ever guessed the stately sails my little craft was lost by Emily Dickinson. Now the spring is in the town, who would not a rover be? When the winter kills go down to the calling of the sea. We will now have a musical selection performed by the String Collective.
We will now have a poetry selection by St. George's Preparatory. Tsunami is crashing my boat. I'm drifting away into the sea. A huge wave is about to defeat me. Help! Help! A ginormous wave is going to drown me. A giant wave is about to hit me. Help! Among, among the night sky, waves shine. It's a stormy, dark, and dangerous night, and I'm drifting away. Help! Elimination wave about to hit me. Help, it's getting closer and closer and closer. There is a hurricane coming. It's so windy, we got to go home. Help me. Tsunami wave about to flatten me. A colossal wave heading towards me. Help, help, I shout. There's a colossal wall of water going my way. Please help me and save the day. Oh no, a tsunami wave is coming. Oh, help me. There is a hurricane coming. So windy, we are going under. Help! We're going to read a poem called Across the Ocean Blue, written by Peter Roberts. Once there was a sailor that crossed the ocean blue. Then he found an island with some shiny treasure too. Pie was on the lookout and saw the sailor's boat. They jumped into the ocean and started to bob and float. They floated to the island to begin their mighty fight. The sailor saw the pirates, which gave him such a fright. The pirate captured the sailor and put him in a cave. Then a mermaid came to save him, riding on a wave. She sang a magic song, and suddenly there appeared an old secret door which led straight to Pirate Blackbeard. He was the meanest pirate of all and in charge of all this mess. The mermaid had a plan to get rid of all the stress. She called upon her dolphin to let out a great big squeak. The noise was loudly deafening and made the pirates shriek. They all fell down into the depths of Sir Davy Jones's locker. To never be seen again as the proudly playing soccer. The mermaid and the sailor were as happy as they could be. They defeated all the pirates and now they were both set free. The sailor asked the mermaid to join him for a cup of tea. And the mermaid too, turned towards him and asked, will you marry me? They both sailed off together across the ocean blue. And forever and live happily and ever after too. Danger, danger, help. A gigantic wave is coming. A colossal tsunami is going to crash. I'm so frightened. Watch out, the tsunami is coming. A colossal wall of green sea is about to hit me. Two colossal walls of green sea. Three colossal walls of green sea. Help! Please help me before the tsunami crashes me. Help! Oh, Hawaii, why is the ash of your volcano sitting down like a dormant clamshell? My story is called The Pearly Story. Thousands of clams with pearls as bright as the sun, they shine. It makes the bottom of the ocean glow like a sprinkle of stars. My poem is called Megalodon. Megalodon, oh Megalodon, you are like a panther prowling in the water. Watch out for Megalodon, they are most dangerous to man. Mm, my poem is called A Mysterious Bermuda Triangle. 
The Bermuda Triangle is mysterious. The Bermuda Triangle is a murderer. It pulls boats, ships, planes, and more into the depths of the ocean. It pulls ship after ship after ship. The Bermuda Triangle is like a person coming into your house, waiting and waiting to kill you. My poem is called Below. Sunken ships are rotten and damaged like a like a plant drying out in the sun. Who, wooden and broken in the ocean depth. Who knows their ancient stories of war, money, and hate. My poem is called Titanic. The seas were calm. It was ice cold. Lifeboats were lowering down. It was splitting in two. It was dark as a cave. Steam stacks were falling and windows were breaking. My poem is called Splash. The ocean is a portal to life under the sea, a school of fish, so pretty, so shiny, so calm. My poem is called Oceans. The ocean is calm as the forest. So much quiet, birds flying, no, no waves, no, not moving, just nothing doing anything. Tornado, oh tornado, you're being made by warmer and colder. You spin along like a powerful windy day. My poem is called Baby Otter. Baby Otter floats on the water like a bobber across the big sea, searching for some clams to eat. She lives in a sea of green seaweed and huddles with her family to sleep. My poem is called Endless. Some may call it stupid or dumb, but if you try it, it may be fun. A big, pitch black, mischievous place that has a high risk that you may skip. Will you try it? Will you survive it? That's for you to try. Don't freeze, it's quite the breeze. It may seem bottomless, but this watery space void has its limits. Will you make it? Will you break it? Go to the ocean floor, see what the horrors have in store. Like a, a freezing winter night, but with the lack of light, there's not much delight. My poem is called Pearls in the Moonlight. Pearls are like many moons that shine so bright in the empty silver moonlight. Pearls. Pearls are pretty treasures on the ocean floor, lighting up the sea like a baby moon trying to find its way home. My poem is called Pearls. Pearls are like a full moon. Pearls are shiny and pretty. Pearls are white and pretty. My poem is called Clamshells, O oh Clamshells. Opening and closing, like a bird flapping its wings, enjoying the breeze with a pearl so bright, like a full moon you can actually see. Up close it might seem too bright, but step back and it's almost like a star at night. My poem's name is Whirlpools. Whirlpools are beautiful things. They're like tornadoes in the water. They look cool, but dangerous. And they make you feel quite calm and quite relaxing. It was a hot and sunny day. Out on the bow of the boat I lay, with the breeze just hitting my face, when a nearby boat came cruising in like a race. Splashing waves hitting the sun, while the girl was toasting a hot cross bun. The wind on the water looked like a maze. After fish after fish, we're in a chase. The sand on the bottom of the floor looked like flour. The giant waves must be towers. Salty spray splashed into the sky. Dear ocean, I must say goodbye. I went to the beach, sat down, and looked out to the glistening blue sea. Waves coming in, splashing up on me. As the salty water hit my cheek, sun blistering on my back, I took three deep breaths in and eased my way down. The splashing sea hit my cheek, sun blistering on my back. Salty sea spray in the wet breeze, ships sail across the glistening waters. Sand moving along the cold sea floor, midnight comes along. Sea animals get closer as the tide moves me back. Thank you.
now have a musical selection performed by the String Collective.